All right, guys. Massive re-zero drama because of skip content in the anime. I hope this Twitter thread that we're about to go through is not going to spoil us. Chibi wouldn't do that to us, right? Skipped and cut content is the bane of any fan's existence when it comes to seeing their favorite series mm. adapted into a live action movie, TV show, cartoon, or even anime. Yep. Because typically when it comes to cut content or skipped content, it can be minor details that relative... I know this is off topic, but this is very funny to me. Sony shuts down Firewalk Studios, cancels Concord. If you don't know about Concord and the absolute retardation that these dudes these woke fucking dei devs and teams saying like the modern gaming audience bro they did a fucking full refund they made the ugliest characters the shittiest game thinking that like you know making this shit like more inclusive and you know more dei is somehow gonna get them a good product it turns out motherfuckers don't care they just want a good game oh my god i'm so happy this is like free market capitalism at its finest you put a product out there that the market doesn't want you get fucking put down you dare to think that you know what the audience wants? That is so cringe. Thank you, IK Risk, for that tier one, man. Appreciate it. Tively are not really that important. It just gives a little bit of explanation to maybe a certain character's actions. Or it's cut content to the point to where it changes fundamentally the foundation of the story mm. and kind of future plot points and arcs and what some elements of arcs are going to be focusing on in the future. And so yep. in this case... What I'm talking about today is obviously skipped and cut content of ReZero that is causing controversy and drama for the last 15 or 20 or so out. Why would people have controversy and drama over Al's quote-unquote secret that we should know as season one? If anything, the controversy and drama should be people outraged that... Al, being an Isekai character, was not already set up back in season one before we went into the role selection, because this is exactly how it happened, I think, in the ReZero manga or something, or light novel. I forget exactly, but these are things that should have already happened that's only supposed to enrich your experience as you watch more, and you can go back and say, oh my god, some shit happened with Al, and it was, you know, I can't believe they set that shit up in season one. That's what people should be mad about. Like, why are people mad that break time is introducing this element that you should have already known? Hours within the ReZero community. Now, I'm going to get into what was cut and skipped and all that and talk about it in a second, but one thing I want to say fundamentally before I go any further is that when an adaptation or when a series is adapted, not everything is going to make the cut. Mm. And sometimes this could be a good or a bad thing. It depends on the pacing of the show and what necessarily is cut. Obviously, there is good examples and bad examples of cut content or skipped content. It really just depends on what the main focus is. And so in this case, when you think about what was cut or skipped in ReZero, there is some important content, obviously, that has been skipped. But there is one... Ah, uh, some important. I think that this is, like, stupid important. I think this is, like, actually, like, world-breaking. It'll... If you never knew that Al was an Isekai character, and on top of that, the stuff with Betty, the fact that he knows Bieko's, like, nickname, right? Like, like without ever making contact, that should shatter your minds. One thing in particular that was skipped early on in Season 1 of ReZero, aka Season 1, the yep. beginning... That was skipped, that Arc fundamentally three. has become more and more important as the story has progressed. And it's finally at that point to where that cut content, it needs to be adapted. Or nobody is going to understand what's going on with certain interactions with characters. And so that is where the drama stems from. So let's get into it. Okay. So what you see on screen, this obviously looks like chibi short form animation. This is something that's very reminiscent of a Sekai Quartet. It is something we have seen for a bunch of different, you know, Katakawa shows. You've seen it for Overlord. You've seen it for Konosuba. You've seen it obviously for ReZero. There's Tanya. A little bit of Tanya. You know, this is a common like adaptation style you see with little short form animations of very popular like, you know, a Sekai stories. And obviously that's why a Sekai Quartet, you know, came into being. Very interesting show. And it was definitely some plot relevance that was very it, it gave a lot of details to ReZero and other stories that nobody expected when yep. season 2 came out but I'm not and not even this episode there has been so many times that ReZero break time has foreshadowed and hinted the future episodes for example the bunny right there is a moment when uh, in Memory Snow actually and this isn't even break this isn't even break time this is like a separate OVA movie right Memory Snow 
there is a cute moment where we're like doing snowman competitions and stuff. And what happens? Uh, Petra makes a bunny and, you know, we make that into like this mecha, you know, drill rabbit thing uh, in break time later on. And that bunny is literally the great rabbit that, you know, eats up Subaru later on. There is many incidents where stuff like that gets kind of casually hinted at. There's also a vehicle going super mecha. I'm still... <laughs> it's probably never going to happen, but just be aware that there was a moment when Biako went into, like, like Gundam, like, you know, transformation mecha drill Biako mode. So, like, that may actually happen in the future, man. I'm trying that path. Right now, what I'm talking about is, is this. This is a short form animation that's coming out this anime season that not many people are fundamentally aware of at this current mm. time. I was, I haven't been watching it, but I was aware of it. And you know, usually when I watch these, I watch it because something probably happened within it. And in this case, that's what has happened here. So giving some background information, this is called ReZero Break Time. And this is like, you know, um, you know, multiple episodes in of Break Time. Five. And these are usually given a little bit more flair or details to certain character interactions that more or less might not have had any focus or attention in the actual adaptation, aka the anime of season three. And so this scene here gives a conversation between Al, this character, and also Subaru and Beatrice. Mm -hmm. And when you see this conversation... It is, let's put it this way, it is crazy that they adapted something so important into a anime short that's of only two minutes long. I think the upset, people are upset, not because it's finally getting revealed now instead of season one, but rather that it's in a separate break time side short, which is so, such an important information, right? So people are upset, like, why wouldn't you put this in the main, you know, canon episode? Why did you put this shit in the uh, side stories? That, that's, that's valid. Why would they do that? Um, if that is the assumption that we're going to go off by, maybe um, they realize that in order to get more push for people to actually have an incentive to, you know, watch break time, right? We want to get the ratings up, not just for the episodes, not just for the anime episodes, but, you know, the shorts as well. Maybe including, you know, bombshells like this is okay. Maybe. And if we now then think about how this will get handled in the main story, it would be awkward if they just kind of acknowledges that Subaru already knows that Al is an Isekai character, right? Now, there is that one scene back at the Royal Selection in, you know, this is eight years ago, nine years ago, I don't even know, back in 2016, right? Where, uh, Arc 3 Royal Selection, Anastasia is talking, Subaru says, that's a Kansai dialect, and Al confirms that, like, he kind of knows about the Kansai dialect. And so it's like, yeah, that's how people in Karagi talk. And that point, it's most likely a plot hole, but it's already kind of subtly hinted that they kind of know each other, which could be that they off-screen this talk. But I, I think that's an inconsistency with the plot hole. I don't think something so significant as Al's identity, not even the true identity, but just, like, where he's from, the background info, would be just, you know, brushed off like that. And maybe in Season 3, there will be a moment, a key moment, where we'll revisit a, you know, moment like this, where Al and Subaru kind of has a talk, and we do find out that he's an Isekai character, and they'll do, like, an anime-only version of this meeting and break time. That most people are completely unaware of, and doesn't even have a actual official translation. And, yeah, I, I want to make sure I state that point. That... ReZero Break Time, this that's coming out, does yeah. not have an official... Karakawa, you're dropping the fucking ball. Eminence and Shadow, right? They got great subs that during the time it was airing, but I guess... um, And are they really dropping the ball? Maybe the global audience is not their uh, priority. So maybe I'm uh, arrogant for even assuming that they should be catering towards us. But if you think about, you know, having more people on board and watching your shit, it just kind of feels stupid that you'd be missing out on a big chunk of the audience globally translation okay the translations you see here on screen is actually from you know stride and ice and his group that works on it and people he knows that you know translated and put the sub my pirates on this break time this is not officially picked up by any company right now there is no legal way to watch this unless you live in japan and understand japanese so basically most fans a lot of fans of re-zero 
are not going to watch this because it's not picked up officially by any means. And most fan groups probably are not going to really translate this besides the very die-hard fan groups, which aka happen here. And even then, most people are not even going to watch it because they're going to think it's not really important. Because yeah, it's really hard to push the average audience to seek outside content. And again, we talked about this in the other video. Right, about 30% or less than that that watches the main anime episodes will actually even seek out the cut content. So it's a uh, they're missing out, but what can you do about it? Because the art style is different, it's chibi form, it's two minutes, you, you get the point. So, anyways, the details within the short gives revelation to Al and who he is. And at this point in time within the story of ReZero, most people are let's just say anime only and don't much, know much about him. They're not going to really have too much of an opinion on Al's character. The most that people are going to say... I wonder if there's still anime onlys that don't realize that Al doesn't have a left arm. And I don't even blame them. I think that the way that his poncho is, you know, hiding his shoulders and how his helmet is so, like, loud, as in, like, to the rest of his outfit, everyone's focused on that and there's always Priscilla around. Like, they, they kind of, like... They hide his loss of an arm really well, in my opinion. Is is that he's cool design with his helmet, the one arm thing he has going on yeah. there. Like like here, like you would, like you could right now, even now, you could. It, it's very obfuscated, you know. It, they do a, his design is really well in hiding that loss of an arm. To just like his speech pattern of calling Subaru, you know, bro, stuff like that. But when you actually get into this part. He reveals to Subaru that he is someone that is from Subaru's hometown, aka Japan, the <gasps> planet Earth. He is and not even that, the same hometown, Tokyo, is from the original world that Subaru came from, which is a massive revelation to ReZero. What this basically says is that Subaru is not alone. Mm -hmm. That there can be other people that have been transported or teleported into the world of ReZero. Yeah. And Subaru is not the only case in point example. There is others. Okay, for Al to be here, this opens the door up for not just, you know, two to three, dozens, generational of people that potentially is in the land of ReZero. Well, this is not really insane information in terms of other Isekai characters existing in the ReZero world, right? Because we do already know about Hoshin of the Wilderness, and at this point, if you can't figure out that Flugel is also one, right? He wrote it in Japanese. It's also cut content. Flugel, the great sage, right? He, he is also, uh, quote-unquote, isekai. Uh, there, there are some weird theories about how Flugel is actually faking it, you know, with the Hoshin of, of the Wilderness because of his red hair characteristic. And how could a red hair person be Japanese? Maybe he's a fucking, you know, an immigrant, a, a super weeb that went to, you know, Osaka by himself and became more accustomed with it. I don't really know, but there's stuff like that. But what Al did confirm in this break time episode is that as far as he knows, right? And this isn't like an actual fact of the world, but according to him, he doesn't know of other existing other worlders, right? It's just Subaru and Al right now. But that doesn't mean that there can't be others in this world currently. And in this case, when you look at the architecture that, you know, ReZero Season 3 is taking place in, it looks very Kanzai and, like, it looks very, yeah. like, Japanese. We learned that in, like, you know, Season 3, Episode 1. Style, it's obvious to wonder, like, oh, yeah, with the style of the architecture and stuff, most likely there was someone from Japan, from the old days of Japan, that came in and put that architecture from ancient Japan into the ReZero world. You get the point. It's like... And I guarantee you, the people complaining about the 90-minute release of episode 1 saying that this is all just filler and only the good shit was at the end. Information like this. This is such important foundation and lore drop exposition that builds up the story. I guarantee you, those monkeys just... It just went through their head. They're like, uh-huh, sure, whatever. When's the fight scene happening? It's like, bro, do you not understand the significance of this? Like a, a domino effect, so to speak. So anyways, the reveal, as you can see, it reveals that Al is from Subaru's world. Yeah. And that, you know, he reveals to Subaru, like, yeah, you know, have you not caught on? Yeah, you know, we come from the same place. And Subaru's in absolute state of shock and all that. And this reveal obviously comes off as like, this is the first time it's being mentioned. But this is technically a conversation that happened in season one. Subaru Arc three. and Al having a combo when, you know, Subaru first encountered Priscilla and all that about finding out about this. But obviously it's been restructured to be put into this, which gets into the main crux of the issue. That this massive revelation, this detail is been given in a break time short that yeah. most of the community 
is not going to watch. And I'm going to say this, and I'm on I no matter how I say this, this is going to upset people and say that it's spoilers or whatever. But it's apparent it's important. Yeah. Al is from Subaru's world. There's no way Tape Sensei, the author of ReZero, would introduce a plot point like that. And that is not important in some way to Subaru's growth as a character. Very even important. It isn't a massive like, plot point for like a story arc. I wouldn't even say that the whole Isekai thing is the most important, you know, uh, revelation in this episode. The the craziest revelation is how Al knows Beatrice's nickname that Subaru says to her, Biko, even though they've never made contact, nor has they ever heard Subaru say it. And the fact that Biko says, only Subaru can say Biko. And Al says, I know that all too well, which hints even more. Like, there's layers in this break time. The first layer is Isekai, otherworlder. Okay. Second layer is... How the fuck do you know Biku? Are you actually Subaru from a different timeline? How does this make sense? It's a massive plot point for Subaru's character and him being able to interact with someone that knows what he's going through in terms of how the world is so different from his original world with fantasy and elves and all this. It's going to be fundamentally different. The conversations that Subaru can have with Al, mm -hmm. it, it, it opens up so many doors. So you can... You think we're going to have conversations though? <laughs> Ain't no way, bro. Motherfucker dipped on us to go say Priscilla, which she should, but they're clearly not giving us the Al content too easily. They sh make him show up. He says some sus shit. Information that, like, anyone should be confronting him about, but we're too fucking busy in the heat of the moment. And now he just leaves. It's like, all right, buddy. See you later. You can see where this is important. So the fact that this revelation was revealed in a break time is honestly a massive L. Like, I, I, I want to be honest. I'm glad it's actually... I think that it is an L if they are not going to address this in the main story, right? If they don't address this in the main story, that is like, it doesn't make sense. There's no way that the average person watching the anime are just going to just understand. It, it, you can't just, you know, go gloss over that. So my, again, my, my interpretation of why this could be happening is they're trying to boost up the ratings of these short form content, right? No one's watching the side stories as much. If we introduce some crazy shit and people are talking about it, maybe more eyes will go there. That gets the ratings up there. And then maybe they'll also do an anime only, you know, a separate way of introducing this conversation later on so that everyone is happy. Added, don't get me wrong. I'm glad it's added. But this is a massive, massive freaking L for the ReZero anime series. The fact that this was revealed in break time instead of the official ReZero season 3. There are so many moments it could have been added in, even in passing, maybe every flashback or something. But no. But now that this has happened, we're probably going to see in season 3, Al and Subaru interacting in season 3. And Subaru is already aware that he's from, you know... Japan, in my world, he, yeah. he'll be aware of it. And fans are going to be like, huh, when did this happen? You know, am I misremembering all that type of stuff? You're going to have people wondering that. So, I just, this is a massive L. This is one of the biggest L's I think the ReZero anime has ever taken. Uh, I don't think this is a massive L, though. Not until it's confirmed that they will never address it in the main story. If that happens, for sure it is. I think that we should give the benefit of the doubt that Nagatsuki Tape and Studio White Fox knows what they're doing. There is no way that a show like this that gets so much fucking love and attention poured into it from both the author and the studios, you know, in the production, you know, making this, are just going to make a blunder like this. I think that this could be just a marketing campaign. I think that um, they may know what they're doing. Again, my theory is that they're pushing out this content to the side stories to get those viewers hip up. And maybe they'll address this, you know, in the anime episodes by itself in a different, cooler way. And if that happens, great. If it doesn't, then it's a massive fucking L. And that's sad. I mean, once again, I'm glad the content's added. Don't get me wrong. I'm glad it's here. But why is it in a short form series that isn't even officially translated? It's not even picked up. Even if you want to disregard that's in a break time. Sh that's pretty funny, though. That, it, like, this is the extent. And I, I think it speaks in volumes of how amazing the reserve community can be. That we have let's dedicated people providing this content that we're kind of gate kept out of, right? It, it, like, it's crazy that like this insane information dropped. Kadoka released it. We don't even have fucking cells for it. Like, it, it is just so sweaty. Like, remember that other shit too? The other example I'm bringing in is um, there was a data episode 
After Arc 2, Amelia and Subaru has a date. They go to the flower fields in Arlan Village, a secret spot. But you can only watch it if you go to a fucking casino. <laughs> you have to go to a casino in Japan in a pachinko machine. And that's the only way you can watch it. You know? So I'm just... That example I'm bringing in is to highlight how sweaty <laughs> this show is in terms of how you need to, like, find the fucking content for yourself. Short form anime, okay? You want to disregard that? It's not even officially picked up, so you can't even legally yeah. watch this. <laughs> and even if you wanted to illegally watch it, yeah. you would have to wait on a fan group to translate the said content. Yeah. So that says enough. So yeah. wild, absolutely wild stuff today. Ooh. I did not expect this type of revelation, and this um. This is for the web novel readers. I, I'm, okay. I'm just going to play it, and I'm not going to really comment too much more than that. Okay, we're going to talk about the real fucking shocker here. Only Super is allowed to call me Biko. I know that all too well. <laughs> Bruh. What do you mean you know what? What? What do you mean, bro? Yeah. Wild. Yeah. Absolutely wild. Yeah. That's a wild thing. Anyways, I'll leave it at that. And I wanted to go read some fucking tweets and farm the drama, but we can't because there's a lot of spoilers down there. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you. Yes, sir. Please go give Mr. Chibi a like. Check out his videos if you haven't. And I think that again, if like, like I want to give the benefit of the doubt, right? Studio White Fox, Nagatsuki Tape, they've proven to me time after time that they truly do care about ReZero, right? There may be some blunders here and there, right? Some people talk about how Regulus' design should never been like that. He's supposed to look super average. And I can't believe they cut out Project Omega and many, many other stuff, right? But because I know how sweaty the show is, I, it's hard for me to assume that they would simply gloss over this bombshell of Revelation in break time and never address it in the anime canon episodes and have the audience figure out for themselves. That doesn't make sense to me. I will wait until it's been addressed, as in, like, will the anime episode actually deliver? And if they don't, and they just go along as if Super Nile's already had the discussion, then for sure, that is a fucking massive L.